Okay, here's the machining of the end of the fixture, the mandrel on this chuck side for the super duplex parts, operation three. And right now here it's doing this typical um, adaptive roughing cycle. I'm going to show a different type of machining in this video with a feed mill later on. You'll notice those um, the sheet metal around the steady rest rollers and those aluminum rings. It's kind of like the rings form like a kind of a, a labrous seal and the sheet metal covers the rollers because there's going to be a lot of shavings and machining going on on this machining operation and, and I can't have them getting underneath those rollers and, and causing dents and things in the mandrel. So that's what that's all about. You can see in this picture the the uh, I, I did the adapter plate thing. It, it mounts onto that spindle adapter and the just the same as the previous fixture. So I didn't feel a need to go over that again. If you if you want to see that, you can watch that video. And I roughed in the bore. Well, I skimmed the OD and roughed in the bore. I didn't I didn't show that in this video, but it's just a drilled and roughed hole which I'm going to come back and bore later after I do this machine work. So like I said, this is just uh, machining these three um, diamond pin-like things that mate to the part, the, whole, the bores in the, their three parts on the tube. And right now it's just roughing them off. And it's going to rough further back in there. And, it, and um, like I said, I'm showing this adaptive thing, but I don't believe, I don't really, um, I use this cycle off and on, but it's really not the fastest way to rough off material. See, that's running at normal speed on that clip right there. The other ones obviously are sped up maybe five to ten times faster depending on the clip. But, but with this cycle, you, you actually are cutting a lot of air, as you can see when you're making your transition movements back so that it can climb mill every pass. And um, it's a little bit slower because you have to take shallow depths of cuts on the side of the tool, but it is very reliable and you don't have to worry so much for tool you know, breaking the tool or, or a pressure on the tool, and so it's kind of convenient to use it. But the faster way, as you're going to see in a second here, I'm going to use a feed mill, and, and although in this particular program I'm running very conservative, that's a feed mill, it's a Mitsubishi feed mill, a 7 8 diameter, the 3 quarter inch shank, and it's sticking out about 4 and a half inches from the tool holder. So this is a fairly long overhang for a milling tool of this type. Although I have stuck this tool out longer than this even. And although this this particular clip is sped up, the rest of the clips are running at normal speed on this tool. And I'm, I, like I said, I'm being very conservative with the feed and speed right now because I just didn't want to worry about anything on this machine or this fixture end. But when I normally run a tool like this, in steel or stainless, I'm probably running more. Th this tool is running about 60 inches a minute feed rate right now, but I normally would run maybe 90 or 120 inches per minute feed rate, and maybe a little bit higher RPM. And uh, I've pretty much experimented with different ways to rough material and using feed mills is the fastest way that I've found to rough out material. If you, if you use bigger ones like the three inch diameter or so one on a shell mill shank, you can, you can rough off a lot of volume of material very quickly with this type of tool and it's very reliable. You don't have any trouble, you don't have to worry about um, taking, if you take deep depths of cut say with a regular face mill, you have to be there ready to stop it if an insert breaks, but, but this, you don't have that trouble with these feed mills too much. And on a three inch feed mill, I'd probably be running 200, 
50 inches per minute feed rates. This tool is taking about 50 thousandths depth of cut and it's running, like I said, at 60 inches per minute in this video, but I would typically run it faster than that and not really have any problem with it. So it's roughing off the fixture. This, those areas where it's roughing down right there really aren't critical. It's just clearance for tools that are going to come in and machine the parts. Now I'm finishing the ODs of those um, pins. This has to be held pretty close because I want to I want to have them a little bit larger than the minimum value of the bores because I'm machining the bores to the nominal size. It's plus or minus two thousandths tolerance on those bores so I'm machining these pins about a thousandth and a half under the nominal but it's they're actually larger than the minimum tolerance of the bores so that there'll be a nice fit because that's that's what clocks the parts in relation to the C axis when uh, when I'm machining them so I got that about where I want it and now now I want to uh, re bore that hole to fit the the tail mandrel I called it in the previous video nicely I bored that after I I milled the ODs away because I thought there might be some distortion and I wanted this to fit the other other mandrel very nicely. Right now I'm measuring it, it's about a thousandth less than I wanted it to be. But I'm going to try the mandrel in it anyway and see how it fits. It's kind of a little tricky to get this thing in there because you have to have the crane just the right height to get that lined up because it's there's only about a thousandth of an inch clearance on that right now. When I shoved it in there, see there's coolant and air and I can't even push it in. So I felt like I needed a I wanted another thousandth of an inch clearance just to so that as the fixture gets used and it gets dinged up or something or you get debris in there, you don't have trouble. So that, that fits about the way I like it. I still can't shove it in there. I, I machined a groove in the OD of that, that tail mandrel later so that it, it wouldn't have that problem with the air and the coolant in there keeping it from going in. I mean, the tailstock would push it in there, but it might be hard to get it out. It, it would kind of create a vacuum. Here I'm just cutting some chamfers on the um, pins so they'll slide into the part easier. Now machining back behind here, that this this is going to be a lot clearer in the uh, next videos of what this all does back there. That where I'm machining right now is not critical; it doesn't even make any difference. It's just clearance for tools. But that where it's machining there, there's going to be some wedges that fit underneath an overhang of the part to support it. And because the parts might vary slightly in dimension I want to be able to get that up snug there so we don't have vibration and also I'm going to put a screw through there later in the operation to hold the parts before I split them into three parts so that they don't like pivot or something and cause problems on those pins it probably wouldn't anyway because it's going to be fitting the bore fairly close but just in case So, like I said right here, it, that's not critical where it's machining, but this is right there where it's going to fit that wedge. There's a five degree angle difference so that it'll make up against the bottom of the part depending on, uh, well, there's a screw, I put a screw hole in from the other side later. And this is just machining back here on this notched area that, again, isn't critical to the fixture but I just want to make it look a little nicer. So then I come in with a drill and, and, um, and drill and tap this hole 
where I said, you know, where that screw is going to go in before I split the parts. And this is just a little undercut that's going to be a um, help to help hold those wedges in there so they don't fall out when you take the parts on and off of the fixture. That'll be more clear in the next video. So this is the finished end of the mandrel and the end of this video. So thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so already.